everyone. I am so delighted that you decided to continue your studies despite this trying time. Indeed, learning has to continue. So, I would like to welcome you all to a whole new learning experience on this virtual science class. Welcome to Bamboo Tela Escuela. This is your school on air in Science 7. By the way, I am Teacher Julius. I know that all of you are all excited to learn new things. Today, we are going to start our exciting adventures and full of learning experiences in Science 7. Are you ready? As we discover new ideas and adopt new knowledge for this virtual science class, I am expecting that you will listen carefully and watch attentively. And of course, answer the questions diligently. Make sure to have your modules and learning activity sheets with you. And tune in to DWNDFM and CMD Cable Channel and also streaming live at SD Okawayan Facebook page. Today, we will talk about scientific investigation. And after this virtual discussion, you are expected to first analyze scientific basis of some myths. Second, show appreciation on scientists and their good traits. Third, identify the components of scientific investigations. Fourth, describe the components of scientific investigations. And lastly, apply the scientific method in formulating a problem and designing a process for investigation. At this point, let's have an activity that aims to check what you already know about the lesson you will take. Proceed to page 6 and 7 of your module. All you have to do is to choose the letter of the correct answer. Write the chosen letter on a separate sheet of paper. Number 1. The process by keen observation of your surrounding and awareness of what is going on around you. A. Analyze B. Hypothesis C. Observe or D. Research Number 2. The process by reading and reviewing existing records and data information related to problem identified. A. Analyze B. Hypothesis C. Observe or D. Research Number 3. The process by which one formulate an educated guess on the factors that affect a particular problem is called A. Analysis B. Hypothesis C. Observation or D. Research Number 4. Organizing your data into tables and graphs so that it will be easier to visualize your result is an example of A. Analysis B. Hypothesis C. Observation or D. Research Number 5. Drawing conclusions if they agree with your hypothesis based on your findings and interpretation of data is called A. Analyze B. Conclusion C. Hypothesis or D. Research Number 6. Designing your experiment and write the procedure to test your hypothesis is A or an A. Analysis B. Hypothesis or C. Test Number 7. It is one's explanation for the unknown counteracted by rituals that pass on from generation to generation and accepted as truth. A. Fact B. Hypothesis C. Myth or D. Tradition Number 8. A variable presumed to be the cause of any problem. A. Controlled or constant B. Dependent or C. Independent Number 9. He was recognized as the inventor of scientific method. A. Albert Einstein B. Aristotle C. Galileo Galilei or D. Johannes Kepler Number 10. It is a quest to find the answer to a question using scientific method. A. Scientific innovation B. Scientific investigation C. Scientific method or D. Research you just have done the first part of the module. As we continue our discussion, you will learn a lot of things about scientific investigation. Before we finally start our discussion, I want you to watch this video clip that I have personally made for you. 
But before that, I just want to remind everyone that you need to watch the video keenly and of course, listen carefully. Because after watching the video clip, you will answer some questions. Enjoy watching! Magandang araw mga kachabs! Welcome sa ating bagong vlog! At kung bago ka pa lang sa aking channel, do not forget to click the like button and subscribe para lagi kayong updated sa mga bagong videos ko. Ang pag-uusapan natin ngayon ay ang mga iba't ibang paniniwala nating mga Pilipino na kahit hindi tayo sigurado ay patuloy pa rin nating pinapaniwalaan at ginagawa. Mga iba't ibang paniniwala nating mga Pilipino. Number one, ang pagsusuot ng polka dot sunamit tuwing sasapit ang bagong taon. Tayong mga Pilipino ay naniniwala na may swerte ang dala ang pagsusuot ng polka dot sa damit tuwing bagong taon. Ang mga polka dots o mga bilog ay sumisimbolo sa pera. Kaya marami sa atin tuwing bagong taon ay nakasuot ng polka dots. Number two, ang pagtalon tuwing bagong taon. Tayong mga Pilipino ay naniniwala na tatangkad pa tayo kapag tayo ay tumalon tuwing bagong taon. Nakagulian na natin na mga Pilipino na tumalon ng sabay-sabay para tayo ay tumangkad. Number three, ang kamalasang dala ng pusang itim. May mga Pilipino na naniniwala na ang pusang itim ay may kamalasang dala. Ang sabi-sabi, kapag ikaw ay may pupuntahan at may dumaang pusang itim sa iyong daraanan, huwag ka na daw tumuloy dahil may masamang mangyayari sa iyo. Number four, ang pagpapaputok at pag-iingay ng malakas tuwing bagong taon. Nakasanayan na natin mga Pilipino ang paggamit ng paputok, torotot, kaya naman, pagsapit ng bagong taon, tayo ay naniniwala na may kakayahang itong magtaboy ng malas at masamang elemento. Saan ka man pumunta, maingay at masaya. Kasi ayaw nating malasin ng buong taon. And number five, ang paghahanda ng iba't ibang mga bilog na prutas tuwing bagong taon. Marami sa pamilyang Pilipino ang gumagawa nito. Naniniwalang may swerte ang dala ang paghahanda ng mga bilog na prutas na sumisimulo sa pera. Kaya mapapansin kahit sa anumang bahay sa Pilipinas tuwing bagong taon, maraming bilog na prutas sa mga lamesa. Yan lamang ang ilan sa ating mga paniniwala. Hindi man tayo sigurado sa mga ito pero patuloy tayong naniniwala at patuloy natin ginagawa. Pero laging tandaan na ang tunay na swerte sa buhay ay nakukuha pag tayo ay nagsusumikap. At para lagi kayong updated sa aking mga bagong video, huwag kalimutang i-click ang like button and mag-subscribe. Hanggang sa muli, bye! Here are some questions based from the video clip. Did you relate yourself to the video? Could you give me one example of belief that was shown on the video? Do you or your family is also practicing these beliefs? Or do you have other beliefs that you are practicing? I know that we all have our own beliefs and practices. It may vary from one to another person, but that is something we respect. However, we must always look whether these beliefs are quantifiable or can be qualified in terms of scientific explanations and phenomenon. Just for instance, the Chinese have their own beliefs that they do and practice. We, Filipinos, also have our own set of beliefs. We may differ but believing to other beliefs does not invalidate our belief. For example, Chinese people believe that wearing red clothes during birthdays bring luck and prosperity. Sometimes in our culture, Filipinos wear red also during birthdays. Now, how can we validate a belief is either a fact or a myth? These are the simple ways on how to validate whether the belief is a fact or a myth. Facts are supported by scientific attitude and investigated by scientific method, brings about consistent, repeatable results, 
and packaged as theory, while myths are supported by fear of unknown that is counteracted by rituals, brings about inconsistent results, and packaged as superstitious beliefs. Those are the things that you need to remember when it comes to facts or myths. Now, let's try what you have learned. Identify the given statements whether it is a fact or myth. Just write your answer on a separate sheet of paper. Number one, people should not wear masks while exercising. Number two, the coronavirus disease or COVID-19 is caused by a virus, not by a bacteria. Number three, thermal scanners cannot detect COVID-19. Number four, adding pepper to your soup or other meals does prevent or cure COVID-19. Number five, eating garlic does prevent COVID-19. Are you done? Let us check if your answers are correct. I hope you all got it right. This time, let us define scientific investigation and scientific method. Scientific investigation is a quest to find the answer to a question using scientific method. While scientific method, on the other hand, refers to a step-by-step -step process that will help us in solving real-world problems. It is also a way of acquiring a new knowledge and solving problems. It is also a sequence of steps followed by the scientists to differentiate fact from myth. So, now, let us continue. This time, I will show you pictures of different great scientists. Could you give me the name of these scientists? Can you give me the name of these scientists? Yes, you have named it right. He is Aristotle. Aristotle is recognized as the inventor of scientific method because of his refined analysis of logical implications contained in a demonstrative course, which goes well beyond natural logic and does not owe anything to the ones who philosophized before him. Here are some of the good traits of Aristotle. At the age of 17, he was very curious Keenly observe and very positive. He compares and classifies works, measure and recorded data. He perseveres for 20 years in his studying at Athens Plato's Academy under his teacher Plato. He plans, conduct, predict, and infer investigations until he became the teacher of Alexander the Great. He writes the Organon, a set of writings that provide a logical toolkit for use in any philosophical or scientific investigation. How about the scientist? That is correct. He is Nicholas Copernicus or Ibn Almazen, considered by some to be the father of modern scientific methodology. Due to his emphasis of experimental data and reproducibility of its result. One of the traits of Nicholas Copernicus is that he patiently writes the book of optics. Can you guess the name of this scientist? Yes, your guess is correct. He is Johannes Kepler. Kepler shows his keen logical sense in detailing the whole process by which he finally arrived at the true orbit. This is the greatest piece of retrospective reasoning ever performed. On Kepler's reasoning, through explanatory hypothesis. I know that the next scientist is very much familiar to all of you. Could you give me the name of this scientist? Yes, you are correct. He is Galileo Galilei. According to Albert Einstein, all knowledge of reality starts from experience and ends in it. Propositions arrived at by purely logical means are completely empty as regards the reality. Because Galileo saw this, and particularly because he drummed into the scientific world, he is the father of modern physics, indeed of modern science altogether. You just met some of the great personalities in the field of science. They are just few. To tell you, 
there are still lots of great scientists in the world. In order for you to be successful in making scientific investigation, you must possess certain attitudes or traits. Here are some of the attitudes or traits of a scientist that a science student or learner like you must also possess. A scientist must be curious and keen of servant has the ability to compare and contrast, can sequence and process events. He is able to classify things. He can infer things to happen. He shows perseverance and has the ability to gather information or data. Shows humility, has a positive attitude toward failure. He is open-minded has a self-confidence, must possess intellectual honesty. He acknowledged his scientific intuition, has an aptitude for serendipity, and lastly, has a good ethics. These are the traits and attitudes that a great scientist must possess. And you can also become a great scientist if you continue to develop yourself through academic and research. Then who knows, you might be the next big Filipino scientist in the world. Be patient, have perseverance, love you to discover through scientific method. And the next thing you know, you're already a scientist. Believe that you will become your idol scientist because I believe that you have these traits and attitudes already. You just have to keep learning. This time, let us talk about the steps of scientific method. Scientific method is a logical and rational order of steps of answering questions about the world around us. It relies upon data and involves key processes like observing or making observation, research, hypothesis or formulating hypothesis, test hypothesis, analyze, and conclude. Now, let's discuss these steps one by one in order. Observe to identify. All scientific studies begin with observation. Observations are done using your senses. When you observe, you can recognize some properties like color, odor, shape, and texture. Observation may lead to a question that could become the topic of scientific study. In other words, you can ask questions about observation you make. Research to gather related information about the problem. After making a question, you try to find what is already known about the question. You may search across different sources like journals and paper written by scientists. You may also ask resource person or use the internet. Hypothesis to predict or guess or likely outcome that affect the problem. Once a question has been stated, a scientist must formulate a possible answer to the question which is called hypothesis. A hypothesis is an educated guess. It requires careful thinking and the application of skills. A hypothesis often is stated in a cause and effect manner. Test hypothesis designing and performing experiment to solve the problem. After a hypothesis has been formulated, it is tested. To test a hypothesis, a scientist performs an experiment. Analyze, recording and analyzing data to visualize result. Once your experiment is complete, you collect your measurements and analyze them to see if they support your hypothesis or not. Conclude. Draw conclusions based on the result if agree or disagree to your hypothesis. A conclusion is based on the interpretation of data. The data may or may not support the hypothesis. If the data do not support the hypothesis, scientists must try the experiment again or plan a new one. If the results still do not support the hypothesis, scientists may form another hypothesis. Failure to come up with supporting data is not a waste of time. New information and procedures can be gained in the process. If the data support the hypothesis, 
scientists repeat the experiment. If a number of similar results of the experiment, a scientist publish a paper and share the information to other scientists. Variables. The thing that are changing in an experiment are called variables. A variable is any factor, trait, or condition that can exist in different amount or types. An experiment usually has three kinds of variables, independent, dependent, and control. Independent variables, variable that can be changed. Presumed cause, the independent variable is the one that is changed by the scientist. Why one? Well, if you change more than one variables, it would be hard to figure out what change is causing what you observe. Dependent variables. Result of manipulating the independent variables. Presumed effect. The dependent variables are the things that the scientist focuses his or her observations on to see how they respond to the change made to the independent variable. Controlled variables. Variable that is kept the same or constant. Controlled variables are quantities that a scientist wants to remain constant, and she or he must observe them as carefully as the dependent variables. Okay class, before you answer the different exercises on this module, let's have a rundown of the points to be remembered in the discussion. Today, you are able to differentiate fact from myth and analyze basis of some myths. Remember that facts are supported by scientific attitude and investigated by scientific method. Brings about consistent, repeatable results and package as theory. While myths are supported by fear of unknown, is counteracted by rituals, bring about an inconsistent result and package as superstitious beliefs. From the discussion, we define scientific investigation and scientific method. Scientific investigation is a quest to find the answer to a question using scientific method. And scientific method refers to a step-by-step -step process that will help us in solving real-world problems. It is also a way of acquiring a new knowledge and solving problems. It is also a sequence of steps followed by scientists to differentiate fact from myth. We also tackled on how to be a good and successful scientist. A good and successful scientist possess traits and attitudes like the following. Curiosity, humility, positive attitudes toward failure, open-mindedness, perseverance, self-confidence, intellectual honesty, scientific intuition, attitude for serendipity, and good ethics. We also engage about the logical and rational steps of scientific method, like observing to identify the problem, research to gather related information, hypothesis to predict a likely outcome, test the hypothesis, designing and performing experiment, analyze, recording and analyzing data, and conclude, draw conclusions based on the result. We also differentiated the different variables in an experiment. Independent variable, variable that can be changed, presumed cause. Dependent variables, result of manipulating the independent variables, presumed effect. Controlled variable, variable is kept the same or constant. Trivia time! We also met some of the greatest scientists of the world, like Aristotle, which was recognized as the inventor of scientific method, and also Nicholas Copernicus or Ibn Alhazen, considered by some to be the father of modern scientific methodology. Due to his emphasis on experimental data and reproducibility of its results. Now that we are done with the discussion, I know that you are all excited to apply the things that you have learned. I want you to go over your module and answer the different activities for you. For the first activity, turn your module to page 12. All you have to do is to fill in the table using and following the order steps of scientific method. For the first box, observe. And for the second box, problem. 
List five major problems you observe in your home or your community. Let's continue your journey. Turn your module to page 13. Since you are done with step number one, which is observation, proceed to the next step, which is research. This time, write the causes and effects of the identified problems in observation. After research, the next step is formulating hypothesis. This time, you are going to formulate your own hypothesis. Write what they think are the possible solution to the observed problems. In dealing and continuing this journey, let us know more about your traits. Check all the appropriate answer applicable to you. That sums up our lesson. I hope you learned something new today. If you still have questions and clarifications, write them down on your module or message your Science 7 teacher. It has been a great day of learning and discovery that even COVID-19 cannot stop. See you again tomorrow, same time, from 11 to 11.30 a.m. Here only on DWNDFM, CMD Cable Vision, and follow the Facebook page of SD of Hawaiian for more live updates and information. Remember that education must continue in the midst of this crisis that we are experiencing. This has been Teacher Julius for Bamboo Telescuela, bringing education in the comfort of your home. Be safe always!